All right, Simon. Let's uh, let's see how technology works for us tonight. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. You? Not too bad. How is uh, how is the weather in BC? We're finally getting summer over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's warming up too. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, thank you again. I know you and I chatted uh, a couple weeks ago, which was awesome. And um, we'll be getting the content up and some blogs surrounding what we talked about before, which was, you know, kind of about your background and all about your, your products, which I really had a lot of fun going through with you. Um, but uh, tonight we really talked about, uh, you know, obviously pandemic joy that it is. Is, uh, even venturing over to BC, um, but definitely in Ontario, we're a little further abroad. Um, so we thought we'd have some fun tonight and we'd do an actual distillery tour with you. So thank you again uh, for joining us. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, if questions come in uh, throughout the event, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. And otherwise, the floor is yours. Uh, show us uh, sh Show us what you do there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, well, pleasure uh, being with you. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see with technology. It's a little bit weird, and I, uh, I I'll do my best. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So uh, like you can see, I'm uh, at the distillery. Um, yeah, for a little tour. So here we do. Uh, uh, Apple spirits, apple based spirits. Um, we get the apple juice and start from there. So everything happens here in a, in a small unit here. Uh, I might, yeah, no, it's, it's gonna be fine. Uh, that's, that's my little characters here. <laughs> the steel, and that's it. So it is a. a uh, pretty much all myself doing it <laughs> and um, yeah so basically we get the apple juice fermented on site here usually uh, there uh, in uh, in totes um, that are now in the back of the distillery uh, we uh, pitch yeast in and then obtain a uh, cider fermented apple juice a cider um, lots of flavors lots of uh, alcohol fairly rough not so great to drink like this uh, but perfect for us to distill and then i'm going to switch camera all right here we go um, then we distill it into the steel here that steel is uh, very unique we designed it ourselves uh, had the stainless part uh, made uh, we designed it and like yeah we, we provided the, the drawings to the stainless steel guys Ripley stainless in town here in Summerland and then we brought up we brought like all the other parts um, the copper the glass and the content of that column so it is copper rings I've got a display there small copper rings that we had made just for us and it's to clean the spirit so we intro like we transfer the cider into the steel then we boil it and the vapors go up through the column all the way through the column so to give you the better explanation on how it works it uh, well the result first of all it makes the alcohol real strong 95 percent and very clean still retaining the apple flavors so okay so the va like the vapors go through the column heat the condenser up top which is the cylinder right right there <laughs> and then the condenser condenses all the vapors back into liquid that returns all the liquid is sent back into the column. So uh, all those rings, we figured that more than 150,000 of those rings 
are here just to provide a huge surface area to get wet for the vapors to exchange with the liquid and so a huge surface of exchange between the vapor and the liquid and on its way up the vapors are going to steal all the alcohol of the liquid that goes down on so on the top the vapors are really strong and on the bottom the liquid is just stripped of all the, of most of its alcohol and, and returns to the pot and goes round and round so that's how it gets super strong and then that's called the reflux still and then we from time to time we withdraw some of that liquid and then we cool it down into that spiral here and then we collect it into the tanks so, so that's how we uh, go... distill our uh... sorry simon i didn't mean to sorry? cut you off what was it uh, that made you decide to go with a completely custom design? Um, well, <laughs> hello. Well, um, yep. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, my background, I'm a chemical engineer and um, like, uh, my my uh, background is uh, like I've, I've spent my experience is my, my experience is in uh, uh, pharmaceuticals uh, okay. and um, this is the way to do uh, distillation in a smaller scale in the chemical world uh, in the chemical industries um, traditional column stills they are with plates where you've got this exchange between the vapor and the liquid just in those plates where the bubbles are and okay. um, in the in the chemistry world um, those plates are more for like larger in, like large industries like uh, like uh, petroleum uh, distillation when okay. you when like in smaller smaller scales you use uh, packed column so packed column is just like column that are filled with uh, with whatever <laughs> and um, so for me it just makes sense and then um, and um, and yeah I did some simulations and stuff I did some calculations and that's how I came up with uh, that uh, these designs of the of the rings here yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely remember from uh from the imagery that you sent over as we were kind of getting your mini site set up. I remember those little rings and uh, it's interesting to hear more of the background on those. Cause I remember the first time I saw them, I'm like, what are these? <laughs> uh, but um, so you said that there was about 150,000 of those in the still. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's a seven feet, I mean, two meters, uh, over two meters uh, <laughs> column, and it's just uh, filled with it. And, and walk um, me through yeah. So, like, a lot of people have, you know, standard copper stills. By having, by having all the vapor kind of, like, pass through um, that 150,000 pieces of copper, is it it's a refinement process i assume and like you're trying to get kind of like the purest version of your distillate i assume yeah like the the cleanest base spirit and then once you've got a very clean base spirit then you can make some quality products some quality gin and uh, and liqueurs and uh, and all that um so i didn't mention so the I mentioned just the shape of it, which um, uh, provide that surface area for the exchange of liquid and vapor, but also right. all the copper. That all that surface area that is wet is uh, offers a huge surface of copper, which uh, which um, cleans the spirit as well, uh, strips the sulfur out of it. So that's the main reason why, like most of the stills are made in copper, it is to uh, strip all the flavor. Oh, sorry, all the <laughs> all the sulfur out of the the distillate. 
So here I calculated there's like something like 20 times more copper than if the steel was made in copper, where traditionally just the outside is made in copper. Here is right. just all my copper is um, is uh, is in there. Well, I've got this guy a little bit there, but really that's that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's for it to uh, look like a steel uh, that this uh, opening here provides like a mini reflux, like a, a little bit of exchange, like yeah, a little bit of reflux. Reflux means sending back the vapors uh, back into the, uh, the, the, the pot. So, I mean, sending the condensed vapors back into the pot. So this uh, provides a little bit of it, but like hardly anything compared to the column. So basically, in one distillation, I go from 10% to 95% in one shot. Wow. Yeah, that's so that yeah well it makes sense because a lot of times um you know in some of the other distilleries, the distilleries that i've been through they kind of have like a, almost like a multi-stage still where or multi, multiple column stills to kind of you know as you said kind of capture it and then boost the alcohol content and capture it and boost the content as you said by having having the copper on the interior of the surface and being basically the interior of the surface, you're being able to do that in one shot. That's very cool. <laughs> but I didn't invent anything. I just applied it there. And um, and there's a few uh, people that, uh, like few distilleries that uh, try to, to make their own steel and they, very, they go very often that way. They don't use those rings. They use some other kind of peeling, but, um, yeah, 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 I'm not the only uh, distiller to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but Absolutely. I think I'm the only distiller that used those rings, those, those, those shapes there. Yeah, yeah. And was that something that, you know, just to be clear, was that something that you came across or was that something due to your background you actually able, you were able to create? Both. Um, I, uh, um, I didn't really experiment because um, to proper experiment in, the, in that situation, you would need to have the steel, fill it up with like whatever you want to experiment and watch the result. <laughs> if you do it small scale, it wouldn't work quite right. So basically, I just uh, there's like lots of uh, tables where different shapes are well documented. And then I, um, I uh, uh, picked these ones for the uh, property the, the uh, efficiency they all offer and the back pressure uh, that they, they offer. Like that's something you, you don't want to do as well. It's like build up pressure <laughs> because you want too much efficiency, too much uh, uh, surface area, and then you might end up just creating a bomb. <laughs> yeah, you hear so, uh, the, the horror stories from the, the home distillers right it's always somebody's garage yeah. in the neighborhood that goes and explodes when they're trying to do it themselves <laughs> right exactly yeah, yeah so here those rings that chose them for their property and they they were just fine i mean they they were they're very well for uh that size and that uh flow that i'm that i'm using like uh the, the flow of vapor and, and all that. Like if you were to make a, a, a smaller steel, different conditions and use those rings, well, it wouldn't be as efficient. Okay. So all right. Yeah, so, so we've gone through the, the very cool looking still. Um, and uh, one of these days I'll have to make it out to visit you when the world reopens. And I'd love a couple of those rings. Those are really, really beautiful looking. Um, yeah, so we've gone through the still. What happens next? Okay, well... Okay, so I that was the first pass through the column to get the clean spirit. The right. So that spirit, 95%, uh, quite upperly still, and very smooth. 
I took, of course, the heads and the tails apart, and then I've got the nice heart. Then I use that uh, for for my four product for all my product. So for the gin and the absinthe. I they distill the same way. Let me let me with that app. It's quite zoomed in, so I need to uh, to back up quite a bit to have a. <laughs> okay, so for the gin and the absin, those two guys there on the right hand side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they are distilled the same way with their sets of botanicals. So um, uh, I return the alcohol back into the, the pot for a second distillation. I add lots of water and then I add the sets of botanicals. So some botanicals go in the pot and some goes in the gin basket right there. Okay. So the, I boil it, the vapors extract all the, um, all the ex extract all the flavors of those botanicals or extract basically it's like the essential oils that are carried into the those botanicals goes up and then towards the back of the column and then through the those botanicals here so this time those guys here that are into that basically it's a it's a, it's just a chamber that where like with the mesh on the bottom and then that's it so it's just the vapors running through it, extracting those botanicals that are carrying there. So it's it's extracted differently. It's like not as hot, more alcohol, and just the vapors. So um, here it's like way gentler. It's for more the, the more the most delicate uh, botanicals I've got. So and then the vapors go up and then back down and then I collect it into the larger tank. So, uh, that's how I uh, I distill my gin and absinthe. What would be the difference between the botanicals? Like you said, they're more delicate, but like, are there examples of the botanicals that would have gone in kind of at the beginning versus the ones that would have gone in uh, towards the end? Uh, the flowers, the flowers, my lavender, for example, I put it in. Well, that's that's trade secret. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the, the lavender goes in um, in the in the basket. So I've got more the floral and less the um, like the 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 green of the of the of the of the, the flower. Um, yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's like more the floral notes than the herbal part of the of that flower. So gotcha. that yeah yeah. Yeah, and then, the like the juniper <laughs> requires a little bit more, little bit more strong strength, so it goes in the in the pot. But I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah. So that's the gin and the absinthe. They come out at uh, uh, around like 65 to 70 percent. And then I add uh, uh, filtered water into it to bring it to uh, to strength. And um, and then yeah, then they need to sit for quite a while for the the, the, the flavors to settle. And then yeah, and then we uh, hand bottle, hand label <laughs> the fun part uh, <laughs> in the back. And yeah, so that's the gin and the absinthe. Now the vodka, I don't bottle my base spirit. What I do is I put it back in the still, add lots of water back into it, and distill it a second time for the column. So a second okay. time to 95%. So uh, that's, as well, I don't think it's very common um, where it's distilled twice to uh, as a vodka, twice as uh, very high. Ooh. My uh, wireless speaker just uh, just spoke to me. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. So this is the second time through the column. So it's the heart of the heart and it's really clean. And uh, but still, distilled only twice. So quite happily still. And, uh, okay. Yeah.
that's my vodka and uh, the liqueur is the last one the lady over there uh, <laughs> it's um, single distilled I take that base spirit and I infuse it infuse it into the the, stand, the, the larger tank here and um, and I infuse it with like cinnamon oak uh, orange and then sweeten it with apple concentrate okay so it's uh like we 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 tasted it it is sweet apple and cinnamon yeah that's uh that's uh, the apple pie uh yep. beer. oh it's it's so good so <laughs> so you said that, like you hand bottle and you hand label how is that for you like is it, it do you have like a certain machinery just to kind of at least run the, the bottle through to get it wet or is it literally a labor of love that you're kind of like hand applying each one of the labels <laughs> that's funny you say that because uh, until recently I was taking all the labels uh, like taking all the labels out and then applying it on the la- on the, the bowl okay but I I just made myself a small uh, labeling machine uh, <laughs> that quite fancy, but it works. Uh, no, it works well, and with like a, a roll, and it does uh, does everything on its own. So it's just like I just have to um, to uh, roll the. <laughs> He's got to set up the to, sticker, uh, roll it, and just pull the label, and roll the, the bottle, and does it. <laughs> so it goes a little bit faster now, but still very uh, like like very. Uh, um, like everything is handmade really. <laughs> and tell me a little bit about the characters like so your your bottles have such a distinct character to them literally but then they've got these unique um kind of like the art on each of them so what was the the story and inspiration behind each of them and what order did the spirits actually launch like uh, i know that mr fox came most recently um, but as far yep. as your gin, your absinthe, and your apple liqueur, what was the order of kind of production, and was there was there a reason that you went in that direction? So I released them that order: gin, okay. then the liqueur, absinthe, and last the the vodka. Okay. So okay, to go through the all the the product. So the gin is called Libellul. That means dragonfly, and oh. uh, the reason for it, it's um, it's uh, the general feeling about the, um, the dragonfly. It is um, it's a beautiful little animal you see buzzing around, minding its own way. It's very often summer and a beautiful day. It's uh, it's just like the the whole idea about it. Actually, libellule that was a a very good candidate to name the distillery um, but we found like English speakers they struggle with that word <laughs> I, uh, I'm not gonna lie I did the first time and then as soon as uh, as soon as we chatted the last time I'm like oh that's how you say it properly <laughs> Leave it with, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very cool then um, the nectar well, the hummingbird is just um, just makes sense. Apple liqueur is just like super fruity, so nectar was just making sense. This one was easy to find, like really. <laughs> the green frog, um, green frog. It's like the other name for absinthe. It's green fairy. Yep. And uh, we wanted to call it green frog because we're from France and uh, <laughs> so that's that's the reason for it and then he's a painter that's uh, that's to uh, to remind uh, Van Gogh and all the famous painters that were that were yeah getting their fuel of uh, <laughs> Absent. <laughs> and Mr. Fox, the vodka, it's um, just for the, the clever fox. It's uh, for me, the vodka. Uh, vodka can be used in pretty much like any cocktails. Um, 
you I could use the the vodka to make any of the other spirits. So it's more like the the polyvalent and uh, clever aspect of it. Okay. That's and do that. I see? Do I see Mr. Fox actually holding an apple? Like I know you were talking about. Yep. Yeah. So is that kind of a nod to the fact that you know all your spirits have that apple base? Yeah. Yeah. It's a... Very cool. Apple yeah, base. Nice. Yeah, that's that's the reason why. Yeah. <laughs> No, they're just such beautiful. And the lady with the martini glass. <laughs> She's very elegant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Uh... So that's the story. Um, we, uh, it's uh, two sisters of uh, uh, my good friend in uh, in France that um, that drew them. Uh, great, uh, yeah. Fantastic work! Like pretty much, pretty much every day, every second customer, they uh, rave about uh, those artwork. Just uh, beautiful. No, absolutely. So I know, uh, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure how your Wi-Fi is in, in the uh, in the distillery, but I know you have a beautiful tasting room uh, as well. You and I kind of did some of our tastings right in there. Are you able to reach the tasting room as well? Oh, you're right there. <laughs> there you go. That was those guys that I was uh, showing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very cool. So, yeah, a small tasting room, but uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and remind me, you had such an interesting little horror um, at the top of the bottles when we did the tasting. What is that? Yeah, that right there. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I'm going to uh, pour myself a glass. So there we to go. Show you. <laughs> I've got to. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, it's gonna be the gin. Okay, so the pour, it's um. So those ones, the third of an ounce, and I'll show you. <laughs> when there's no more air going in, it stops. And then that's it. That's the measured uh, third of an ounce, 10 mil. Oops. Very cool elegant and uh, it works there's no moving parts or whatever and uh, yeah so those um, those guys they uh, they're classic in France uh, a bit old-fashioned and um, uh, but yeah yeah, yeah. You, you can find them in France no prime but uh, to find the good quality ones the like the ones in, in glass and corks it was a little bit of a struggle <laughs> though in France you find like at the supermarket, you find the ones in uh, in plastic and no glass, no no cork, just plastic and plastic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and and they actually... called. Uh... The... Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. They are called uh, Bula Pastis. Pastis okay. is like the the famous licorice spirit in France. Oh, okay. And did I notice so, yeah. in the the top of your tasting bar was that the same rings that you have embedded into the table or not the bar itself sure yep. looks like it <laughs> that's almost become a bit of a branding component for you then uh, and how many do you think uh, how many do you feel are in your bar <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never get that bored. <laughs> no, it's uh, uh, yeah, they're definitely kind of a beautiful kind of tribute to your still. So uh, it's nice to see that you carried them into the tasting room as well. <laughs> well, that's but, what yeah, makes no. us unique. That's uh, that's uh, yeah, that's us. Yeah, yeah. But um, if. Uh, 
if somebody was to venture out uh, out to the tasting room, um, I know we touched on this a little bit, but since we're doing you know a tour of your distillery, what would uh, what would be the order in which you would you would say of your four products that you would have somebody sample? Starting with the vodka, which is the the lighter flavor, um, although it's quite apple-y, but it's still the lighter one because it's not flavored. Um, then the gin, which is quite boldy, uh, aromatic and citrusy, definitely. The, well, first, the vodka, I, um, I well, all my, sp- like, no. Okay, the vodka, I, uh, have, I, I pour it just on its own. Most of the people okay. drink it straight, or I add a little bit of water, and uh, that brings the, the the fruitiness and almost almost the sweetness out, and cutting a little bit the, the heat of the alcohol. So then okay. then the gin, um, same. Most people drink it straight. It's uh, no prime to drink straight. It it I mean, it's a uh, it's fine enough to drink straight, but like it's still 45% alcohol, so not everybody uh, uh, likes that. Um, I this one I uh, well to to the taste, but uh, uh, tonic, club soda, or, or water. Water that's that's the way I drink it. I drink it uh, with a bit of water in front of the movie in, <laughs> in the evening. <laughs> that's how I drink it. <laughs> And then the liqueur, I just, I just, uh, yeah, everybody drinks it like this, straight. Absolutely. No prime. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, and um, actually, I'd rather it chilled than with an ice cube. I like the sweetness of okay. it. And with the ice cube, I, uh, I, um, I lose a little bit, um, yeah, that, that sweetness. And, uh, and I've, never been very comfortable with um with those uh uh stone uh, whiskey stones yeah like the whiskey they, box i yeah. think it's a habit they, I, every time i yeah i feel weird i don't want to break my glass or whatever i need to find a good one if you if you could advise me one that'd be great <laughs> let me see what i can figure out yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and then last the absinthe because um because the one that just stays the longer in your mouth like if you were to try the absinthe and then the gin it would be uh it would be uh funny um so i'm a bit uh, sad that we start with the vodka which is strong and then and then uh and then go for the le- and then go to the liqueur that is 24 percent and then the absinthe that i pour with lots of water uh and it's like even weaker so it's like a shock at the beginning and then it goes like mellow and mellow uh, but that's the way uh, that's the way it worked best yeah sorry i forgot to mention the absent of course uh with water um i warn people that it is 65 percent i have them uh, smell it first yeah. and then i pour the, the the cold cold water and then i have them experience the the, the the difference of smell before and after the water, big difference, big time. Everybody's like, whoa! <laughs> and it's uh, it remember, goes white uh, nicely in the glass, and it's uh, yeah, refreshing. That's what I think. What I found so uh, interesting because I'm like you know, I was interested in your absinthe when we first started talking because you said I brought a French recipe to Canada. Uh, and I found that so so interesting. But then when I drank it, like I, I've I never really had absinthe outside of, as you said earlier, like the Green Fairy, which you know so many of us, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, uh, have had when we're younger. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I found I found the the drinking of the absinthe, as you said, with that ice cold water, and seeing. The murkiness that kind of emerges. I remember you talking about the oils uh, that get released, and I uh, found that so kind of interesting. Um, it, it definitely changed my perspective on drinking absinthe, which, which uh, 
you know, which is, is great. I'm always looking for new ways to enjoy a, a new type of spirit. So it, uh, it yeah, definitely yeah. changed well, that. It, it's the proper way. <laughs> yeah, I'm, the proper uh, way. <laughs> I'm from very close to the uh, area. And then, uh, uh, and to me, it's the, it's the only way, like 65% it is to carry lots of flavors. Uh, it's like alcohol there, it's like a vector. Uh, it's not to catch fire, it's not to get you drunk. <laughs> it's, uh, it's to carry lots of flavors for it, for those flavors to get released with the water. That's, um, that's, uh, that's the idea behind it. And that's the reason why as well our, our gin is 45%. Our average gin is um, it's 40 here I've got 45% because that, yeah, I can have it a little bit stronger. When I uh, make the gin, it, uh, uh, so I distill it 65, 70%, something like this. And then I add the water into it. It goes milky, a bit like the, the Atom. And then I filter it off to, uh, to remove the excess oil that comes out because they just like saturation. And um, just just the the forty five percent can take so much uh, so much oils. So um, if I was going to cut it down to forty percent, I would strip even more flavors, even more oils out. And uh, so yeah, so that's exactly the same thing between the gin and the absinthe. And actually, the gin, if you add the, the right amount of water, it goes uh, a teeny bit like uh, a palisant. Huh. Yeah, it's it's a so, part. Yeah. Of, but know. it's really like the anise anise oil, the anethyl, that uh, that likes doing that. <laughs> Just, yeah. Well, it's it's always such a difference, um, you know, hearing about the process that you, that says somebody like yourself goes through in the actual distillation. I think. You know, I've been guilty of this myself, like how many times do you just drink something and you don't really think about the process or you don't think about why something tastes a certain way. Um, so, uh, you know, once again, you're looking at the, the oils that are brought out in, in the absinthe as you're actually drinking it. I would have never even thought about adding cold water uh, into it. So, uh, so having somebody like yourself who you know can help educate me <laughs> a little bit more on how to properly enjoy spirits is always a good thing. But uh, no, Simon, absolutely, this is, has been wonderful. Um, I know it's probably long days at the distillery for you, uh, but I really, really appreciate uh, you coming on and, and giving us a tour of your of your your facility and uh, sharing your knowledge with us about how you got going with Alchemist. Um, the last question that I'll leave you with is the name itself. Is that kind of a nod to your background again? Like, are we talking like alchemy or chemistry or where did alchemist come from? Um, well, yeah, it's, uh, it's my background, definitely. Um, just the way I made the, the gin. It's, uh, I distilled like over 30 different botanicals on their own. And then I mixed it, in, I mixed, like, I uh, categorized them, like noted them, and then uh, I uh, blended, started to blend them. And uh, that's how I made my gin, like, until I found like a prop, like a, a blend I like. And then I uh, blended the botanicals on their own, and then redistilled the, uh, and then started from there to fine tune. And then when I went to distill on the on the on the big mama, <laughs> uh, on the big steel, that was uh, that was again like another like adjustment that that needed to be done. So yeah, yeah. And also, well, distillation to me it's like a bit like uh, alchemy. It's um, there's lots of science behind. There's lots of like feeling. Um, there's no right answer because uh, there's no like like formula, like mathematical formula or physical formula to tell you that's a good gene, that's not a good gene. <laughs> so it's like in between arts and science, uh, between like 
uh, measurements and feeling. So that's really the the reason why we called it that way. Um, we know that there is um, other uh, distilleries or other business called the uh, Alchemist. Uh, not in the can in Canada, there's but there is like another uh, distillery in the States called uh, very with a very similar name. But it's just like fits so well, and then um, and then well, yeah, when you've when you've spoken with me a little bit, you you just yeah, just makes sense. <laughs> Oh, definitely. There's no doubt so, about yeah, yeah. But you were mentioning before that uh, I brought you a lot, but uh, like I just, I can, my job is uh, making the spirits and after you need to educate uh, me on making the cocktails and then, uh, and then that part where... <laughs> well, we yeah, can, yeah, uh, we yeah. can definitely have some collaborative, uh, well, that's what we'll do sometimes, Simon. We'll just get together with, uh, with Libra. And, uh, and Mr. Fox and we'll sit down and we'll make some cocktails across the country that sounds fun <laughs> <laughs> sounds good but uh, by all means uh, you know once again thank you so much for your time uh, I really appreciate it I know um, as I said it's been probably a long day but uh, definitely um, I'm so thrilled to have uh, have Alchemist Distiller on board and uh, we're really looking forward to, uh, to not only mixing cocktails, but getting your spirits into the hands of Ontario. Um, so yeah, by all means, uh, I hope um, we can continue to do these kind of videos every once in a while. It's always good to hear right from, uh, from a distiller on what makes their products wonderful and how to enjoy them properly. So we'll definitely be in touch. And in the meantime, have yourself a wonderful night. Well, thank you. Here it's only five, uh, five forty, so not too bad. <laughs> yeah, no, it was enough. a real pleasure being with you tonight, and um, yeah, well, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Take care, Simon. Have yourself a great evening. Bye. All right. Uh, so that was kind of our uh, first tour uh, with uh, Simon from Alchemist. Uh, so it's always great to chat with with the distillers. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to do this as we get uh, more and more uh, uh, distillers onboarded because uh, definitely nothing quite hearing like um, from the distillers mouth themselves about what makes their spirit so amazing. So something just to talk a little bit about and then we can all go and enjoy our respective cocktails and evenings. Uh, just a bit of a heads up, um, one of the things that we're actually uh, kind of in the final throes of it's hard to believe is uh, our founders membership uh, so the way that uh, that we actually exist is by working with great distilleries like Simon uh, to bring their product into uh, into Ontario so anybody who uh, becomes a part of our growing membership uh, gets access uh, to our wonderful distillery partners um, and uh, the founders membership um, allows you to kind of put your stake in the ground about uh, you know where you fell when uh, the membership numbers fell and uh, it runs at a promotional price until uh, August 1st so if you do know anybody who is a spirit lover by all means um, I would say uh, send them our way uh, you can check out the membership options you can check out all of the distilleries uh, that we are currently uh, working with and uh, we can take it from there so until next time, everybody, have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we will be in touch.